So hello and welcome everyone. Uh, today, before we start this session, I want to acknowledge that Royal Road University is located in the traditional land of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and the Squamish First Nation. And it's with gratitude that all of us work, live, and learn here, where the indigenous, where the present, the past, and the future of indigenous and non-indigenous people, faculty, staff, and students come together. So welcome everyone. So today we have a very exciting presentation or a webinar set for you, um, why to do an MBA at Royal Roads University. And we have a few guests that are going to help us to navigate that topic. Uh, the first person that I want to welcome is Dr. Lois Ferrer. Uh, she's the program head of the MBA program. So welcome, Lois. And we also have three amazing guests that kindly have shared uh, their time with their lunch time with us. And their names are Mark Greenberg, um, Jazz Bamra, and Alexander Fanny. And the three of them are going to be sharing with all of you a little bit more about the experience that they had at Royal Roach University. And my name is Andrea Torres. I'm the student recruitment manager here at Royal Roach University, and I'm going to be co-hosting this session. Um, so the agenda for today, first we want to welcome you, all of you, and get to know you a little bit uh, who you are. Uh, so you know who are the people that are co-hosting this session today, but we also want to learn about who you are. So feel free to share any information in the chat box, uh, for example, which, um, if you have any, like maybe which city are you located today? For sure, first, what is your name? Uh, um, any curiosity that you have, or maybe if you are already having lunch and what you're having for lunch. So feel free to share any information with that uh, while I share the rest of the presentation or the agenda. After that, I'm going to talk really briefly about Royal Roach University experience. And then Luis Ferrer is going to talk about the program information. After that, we are going to have the opportunity to share or hear more from our alumni experience. And at the end, I'm going to talk about the application process and the requirements. If you have any questions at any time during this presentation, please feel free to uh, type those questions in the chat box. And I'm going to make sure that we are monitoring the session and we are going through all those questions. Um, so first, I want to talk about our space at Royal Roach University, something that we are very proud of, uh, how we share the space and how we use the space to learn. At Royal Roach, for us, it's very important that we are creating a community of learning. That community can happen in person during the residency component that you do at Royal Roach, or it can happen through our online learning um, portion. Uh, when people are on campus, we highly recommend to explore the campus. Just take the time to set it in, take a breath and explore different places. So here we have the Halley Castle, uh, the Japanese Garden and the Squam Squamo Lagoon. All of them are great places to go for a walk um, if you want to reflect about your day. But I also highly encourage you to use the space when you are on campus to connect with your classmates and build that community because you are going to be working together for a long time through the period of the program, either the, um, the short version or the two years, depending on what is the best choice for you. Um, a Royal Road for us is very important how we integrate the community with our learning experience. So we see you more as a qualification. So you are going to learn more about our flexible admissions component, where we understand everybody has a different path and that path can be a combination of education and also work experience. And we are going to talk a little more how that will look like for the MBA program at the end of the presentation when I walk you through the application process. The next piece is about prof who know your name. If you are someone that is a little bit timid and maybe not very outspoken in many places or city settings of your life, I think Royal Roads is going to create a very safe space for you to share your ideas, build community and create spaces. People at Royal Roads are going to be curious about who you are, why you are taking the program, because we want to be part of your journey. We want to be understanding more how we can support you to achieve your personal and professional uh, goals. Learning based on life, uh, as you will see, our learning process, it will take uh, from your experience that you are, are you're doing at work and within the community. So you are going to be able to bring some of the challenges and opportunities that you're having maybe at the workplace into a class. And as well, some of the learning you are going to be able to apply directly immediately into uh, those challenges or opportunities that you have in your workplace or working with your community. And of course, you are going to be building connections for life. 
we have a cohort model for Royal Roads, and you are going to be building those relations from the first day. And you are going to get to know the people that you are working with. You are going to be able to learn how to lead, but more than anything else, how to follow others. A lot of the work is going to happen in a teamwork environment. And I always tell people, um, I'm a Royal Roads grad, and I always tell people through my experience, it was one of the most challenging but rewarding pieces because I get to learn who I was as a leader, but who I was, was as a follower. And sometimes uh, what people will need from me to make great ideas come to light. And the last piece, um, we understand we are different and that is okay. We want to make sure that we are going to be supporting through your learning process and we are going to be building that together. So with that, oh, the next piece that I wanted to share, uh, share a little bit more with you is that Royal Road is a change maker campus. So what that sounds and what that looks like, uh, we, we place interdisciplinary uh, learning in the, heart of, in the heart of all our programs. Understanding that complex problems require multiple solutions and points of view. And we want to make sure that that is based in a, um, building together communities at the local level, but as well as a global le le level. So all our programs are seeking for understanding of the problems that we are having, but also seeking for different points of view and different possibilities of how to solve them. And that is embedded in our all our programs, including the MBA program. And with that, I would like to pass over to you, Lois, to talk more about the program. Thank you very much, Andrea. And thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to be here with us. It is truly a delight for me to share some information about our MBA program with all of you. Uh, and it's also truly a delight to be here with some of our wonderful alumni. Um, so thank you again for all for being here. So my name is Lois Farron. I started teaching at Royal Roads over 20 years ago can't believe it myself sometimes. And I started teaching in the MBA uh, and I taught for a long time, long time in the MBA before teaching in other programs. And I really think it was MBA students that got me hooked on the community at Royal Roads. And uh, since I started, I have now taught in, I think all of the business school programs, I've worn a number of different administrative roles in the program, uh, and I'm thrilled to be here today uh, in the capacity of MBA program head. So I'm gonna um, walk you through the program, but most of the time that will be spent uh, with our alumni, you're gonna have an opportunity to ask them questions. I'm gonna start uh, asking them a number of questions as well. But before we get to that, I'm gonna take you through some of the basics of the MBA program uh, and its structure. So it, oops, sorry about that, jumped ahead. Uh, so the program consists of 51 credits. Uh, it's, it works out to be 14 classes and then a major project that you do at the end that I'll talk about in a few minutes, the organizational management project. Um, it's what we refer to as a blended offering. And what that, <clears throat> excuse me, what that means is simply that you do a component of your program on campus and a large component of it, component of it online. So it's a blend of on campus and online learning. So you start with a couple of foundational courses online. And then shortly after that, you come to campus for the first on campus full immersion residency period. Uh, so you have started to get to know your cohort members in the online environment. And then when you come to campus, you really are able to get to, not, to know not just your cohort members, but your instructors and the whole community of support that you have here at Royal Roads. You get to spend some time in those beautiful environment, in the beautiful environment on campus. Um, and you really foster strong connections that you will carry with you and the connections will absolutely help you throughout your entire MBA journey and beyond. So the residency um, is a full immersion program for two weeks at the start and then you go off and you start your distance learning, uh, your distance learning sessions uh, for the 18 month program, you have five distant learning distant learning sessions that are 10 blocks each. And for the 31 month, you have, I think, nine, uh, nine different blocks of distant learning sessions. 
And then after those are concluded, you come back, it's a great reunion and another full immersion experience uh, for your final on-campus residency. So those are the, that's the basic structure. Um, the focus throughout the program is really on management and leadership. So that's a common thread throughout the program. So you're not going to walk away necessarily being an expert in every area of business, but you will walk a bit up, walk away with some expertise in whatever area you choose to, you choose to specialize in. And you'll also walk away with a very, very strong management and leadership foundation. And everyone that is admitted into the program has management and leadership experience. Uh, and all of your instructors have on the ground experience as well. Uh, so that's a real differentiator. A lot of MBA programs, you don't need nearly as much experience as you do for Royal Roads. Here, you're gonna be working with, prof with other professionals from all kinds of different backgrounds and from all kinds of different places as well. It was fantastic to see we have somebody joining us from Nigeria, we have people from Vancouver, people from Toronto, just here in this conversation. Uh, and so you expand that out and not only from different ge geographic locations and from different areas, but also from different managerial and leadership backgrounds. We often get people uh, from different government roles, people from the military with military backgrounds, people that work in oil and gas, people that work in credit unions. So you interact with a group of professionals with whom you learn a great deal. Uh, and the approach is a very practical approach. It's all about applied learning. Uh, so, and I'll talk about a couple of the specific applied learning projects, but you'll be finding yourself in situations where you're talking about something in the session in the evening, and because you're all working full time, the next day you're going out and you're applying that information to your job, uh, to your actual job and, act and, and your actual career. So you'll walk away with lots of great connections and, and, and as well with lots of uh, knowledge and insight and tools that you will be able to use to help you advance your career in any kind of an organization that you want to be involved in and any sector that you might be interested in. Uh, so in terms of the 18 and the 31 month options, so we have two options. It's the identical curriculum. The only difference is that the 18 month option is expedited. It's a little more intense. Uh, the program starts off exactly the same. So the first couple of courses you take all together, you come to residency and you do the same courses together. And then once you start your distance learning sessions after the residency period, the 18 month students do two courses at a time and the 31 month students do one course at a time. And you can always choose to start in the 18 month. If you're not sure what you want to do, you can choose to start in the 18 month option. And then if it's too intense or if life happens, we're all adults working in different professions. Life happens. Sometimes it gets more intense than you anticipated. You may want to switch to the 31 month option. It's nice to have both. And we do that just to accommodate different schedules. And we know, um, we know that everyone's uh, in a different situation. So we offer uh, the 18 month and the 31 month op option to offer a little bit more flexibility. Some different elements that I want to highlight. Um, so at the end of the program, you do an individual project referred to as the organizational management project. And this provides a fantastic opportunity for you to really delve into a specific area that you might be interested in. A lot of students will use it to maybe change directions if they came into the program and they learned about something that they didn't even, you know, didn't even realize was a field. They'll choose to focus that to focus their OMP on that area. It gives them an opportunity to really dive into a specific area. You work with an advisor on that project uh, and you work with a company as well. So it's a company of your choice, a topic of your choice and a research uh, area of interest. So you dive into it and you um, and you present out to the client uh, to after, the, after you finish that. So that's an individual project um, that we get really positive feedback on. And it's like an individual consulting project that you do over a number of months. The live business challenges are like team consulting projects that you do over during your residency periods over a period of a couple of weeks. So 
when you come back to campus for your final residency, it's all based on a live business challenge. So you'll be working with an organization and you'll be able to use all of the things that you've learned throughout your MBA to help an organization with some challenges that they're dealing with and then present out to them at the end of that second residency. There's also a live business challenge in the first residency, but it's not the whole residency. It's uh, it's one component of the residency. So that's just an example of a few very applied uh, aspects of the program. You will, will find all of the courses that you would find in most MBA programs that are part of our program, uh, but the focus is really on learning how to manage and how to lead in all of those different disciplines. So you won't walk away being a strategy expert and a finance expert and an expert in uh, in operations, but you, you'll likely be an expert in one of those areas. And in addition, you'll be able to lead and manage really well in all of those different areas. So we also have an option if you finish your MBA, and I noticed there's an MGM student and there's some alumni from some other programs here as well. So we have an option to do an MBA MGM dual degree. The MGM is a Master's of Global Management. Uh, it's a fantastic degree as well. The focus of that program is obviously on international business and on developing cross-cultural competencies and to develop developing a global mindset. So after you finish your MBA or after you finish your MGM, if you want to come back and do the other degree, a number of your credits will count towards that degree and you can do it in a much more, uh, in a much faster, uh, faster way. So that's really a great option to have as well. And then in terms of program op options, there's different ways to help make your MBA your MBA. So uh, one way you do that is, is through the organizational management project. That's something that you're really interested in. And then the other main way is to choose a specialization area that you're really passionate about and or that you want to build your career around. Uh, and so we have four different specializations that are embedded within the program. Uh, we have a leadership specialization that's fantastic. We have a management consulting specialization, and uh, we've had a very strong alliance with Certified Management Consulting, CMC Canada. And so the courses that you do in that specialization, as well as a number of the projects you do in your MBA, count towards a CMC designation. So if you're thinking of becoming a management consulting consultant, that's an excellent specialization to choose. We have two international business options. We have one option that focuses on Asia Pacific trade and investment, and we have one option that focuses on innovation and the European uh, the European Union. For both of those options, you actually travel to those des destinations. Uh, you don't just do your coursework online. You actually go, if you're doing the Asia Pacific, you go to Asia Pacific. You have a number of different uh, course related activities that you do there. You do a lot of uh, on-site uh, business, um, business visits and you meet a lot of people that can be really helpful and important contacts for you if you're, if you're exploring business in that area. If you choose the International Business and Innovation, that takes place in Grenoble, France, and we have a partnership with a school there, Grenoble Management uh, School of Management, an excellent school and an excellent faculty. Uh, and Grenoble is really considered the hub of innovation for, uh, for Europe. So you go to uh, and do some coursework with the Grenoble School of Management, and you do lots of, again, lots of site visits and lots of cultural activities. Any of the specialization options are really um, fantastic options in a way that you can really make the MBA program your own. So those are the options that are embedded within the program. And then you can also choose to take any of the graduate certificates that we offer at Royal Roads. Uh, and we have lots of fantastic grad certs. Um, we, we have project management, social innovation. There's about 20 of them and they're all great options. Um, and there's different ways and different, uh, different times that you can do those grad certs. You can do them uh, before the program start, whoops. Oh, you can do them before the program starts. Where am I going here? 
You can do them during your MBA, or you can come back and complete them and do them after, uh, after, after your MBA. If you do them during the MBA, one of the things that you need to be a little bit cognizant of is that they don't always fit in exactly with the MBA schedule. So you may have to do, it may take you a little bit longer, uh, but if you're really passionate about a certain area or if there's an area uh, that you're really super interested in, then um, <clears throat> then it's absolutely worth it to take a little bit of extra time to, to do a grad cert. Um, and of course, uh, we welcome uh, students to come back. You can also come back and do one of the specializations that's embedded in the MBA program. We have had a number of alumni that have come back and gone to Grenoble and have had a number of alumni come back and, um, and gone to Asia Pacific on the field trips there for, and you can get extra credentials or you can just come back and join the cohort for the learn, simply for, uh, for the learning experience as well. So there's all kinds of ways to, um, to really make the MBA your MBA. Um, and, uh, and it's really, it's fantastic. As I mentioned, it was really the MBA students that got me hooked on Royal Roads was really, I think, too, um, the sense of community that's here, having both of the residencies, one at the, at the top end, at the front of the program, and one at the back end of the program, really provides, I think, a unique way to, um, to really foster the relationships. And the fact that people come from so many different industries and you get to learn with such a fantastic group of people um, is it really creates a, what I think, of course, I'm totally biased, but uh, I think it's a fantastic experience. Uh, and I think we have absolutely fantastic, wonderful alumni. We have three of them uh, that are with us today. And I'm going to actually ask them to introduce themselves. Um, and when they introduce themselves, if they could just share with you what year they graduated and what their specialization was uh, and what they're doing now. That will um, that will start off, kick off our alumni uh, alumni discussions. So Mark, do you want to start? And then- Sure, happy to. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Mark Greenberg. Um, I am the vice president of Craftsman Collision. Been with the company for 25 years. Uh, I graduated in 2018. Um, I, I came into it, uh, um, with, with life experience and business experience previously, um, to doing my MBA. I was with our organization in China for five years. I ran that, uh, part of our organization. Um, and I came in, um, I didn't have any, um, education, uh, formal education. I came out of high school many years ago, and it was more of a bucket list uh, sort of thing to go back to school. Um, and my goal was to have my master's degree by 50. So I started the program when I was 48 and finished at 50. And that's how I did it. <laughs> right on. Um, my name's Alex Fanny. I started the program in 2018 and graduated in 2021. I specialized in leadership. Um, where the program and the degree have really helped my career, uh, it would be the ability to walk into the room and have confidence. I would say not only my experience, but having the degree um, to, to validate that experience with people who I may not have worked or interacted with. I'm currently uh, the general manager and a partner with a consulting firm in Victoria called Landmark Resource Management. And I, I do credit um, that career growth and progression to the program. And as uh, I share and, and Mark and Jazz share their experiences, I think it's important to note that this isn't paid advertisement. Um, we're all here as volunteers today, uh, just like you're here as pr prospective students, giving up uh, your time, which everyone's time is valuable and important. And, um, you know, I, I know Jazz well enough, but I'm, I'm pretty sure for Mark, uh, we're doing this because we care and we believe in the program and we want to give back to an uh, institution that was very, very um, impactful in our lives and our careers. Very well said, Alex. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jaswinder Bamra. I started the, I did the 18 month program. I started in uh, 2016 and graduated in 2018. 
Uh, I specialized in management consulting. And my journey was a, a very interesting one as well. Um, I think the decision you know, for me to enroll in the program, uh, it stemmed from a, a strategic assessment of my career trajectory and, and, and aspirations. So I currently work as a manager, operations manager with Island Health. Uh, I'm a director for a nonprofit uh, organization with women in science and technology. And I've also partnered with other alumni in pursuit of uh, a new business opportunity. So keeping really busy and it's such a pleasure uh, to be here to speak with you all. And please feel free to ask as many questions um, and we're, we're here to support you. Thank you all so much. Just so heartwarming to see you all here. Um, thank you. So I have a few specific questions and, and please feel free all of the participants to, uh, to put questions in the chat box as well. So I'm just gonna throw this out and you can answer them. Anybody, Mark or Alex or Jazz, you can, can jump in. So maybe you could share with the folks that are here why you decided to pursue the program. I can start. Um, as I spoke to earlier, uh, the decision to enroll in the program, it stemmed from a strategic assessment uh, of my career trajectory. Uh, I was drawn to the program primarily due to the uh, esteemed instructors that possess unparalleled industry expertise and knowledge. Uh, the campus environment also played a pivotal role in my decision making, uh, fostering an atmosphere that's conducive to transformative learning. Um, I also have really big goals and ambitions and was so excited to, to pursue them. Uh, and so this program aligned perfectly with my aspirations for, for growth uh, and development and, and what I wanted to do. Uh, what's interesting is that I came in thinking I wanted X, Y, Z, and uh, not only did I pursue success in my career, uh, but personally as well. So. Thank you, Jazz. Uh, Alex, yeah, go ahead, Alex. Okay, Um. well, maybe I'll answer it as why Royal Roads, uh, not why why the program. I think everyone has their own reasons and they're probably all very similar you know, personal uh, and professional ambition, bucket list, spark, great, you know, um, th things you want to accomplish in life. Uh, why Royal Roads as opposed to other institutions? Um, I, I started the program when I was still living in Alberta and I was working uh, as a consultant, a sole proprietor. Um, the, the program just offered a lot of the flexibility I needed based on my personal professional circumstances to come in, do the residency, and then uh, do the distance learning remote thereafter um, over the next year and a half, two years. Uh, whereas some of the other programs I looked at and all great schools, you're gonna get a great education in Calgary and Edmonton, in Vancouver and Toronto, but um, the the flexibility and uh, the, the residency program were probably the biggest draw for me. And I certainly wasn't disappointed with the residency program because it, it put me in the mindset um, of, hey, I'm in it. I've just spent three weeks with peers and now friends. Um, we, we have a, you know, cross, cross that journey. And now we're going to work together remotely over the next 18 months. And there's a personal report um, that we gained uh, that we probably wouldn't have had if we were just coming in in evenings on weekends, which is some of the other blended programs that are available. So um, to summarize that, uh, you know, why Royal Roads? It was the flexibility, it was the residency program, and uh, the ability to tailor the MBA program around my professional commitments to my clients. For me, um, I looked at multiple um, universities, uh, Sauter, um, McGill, but I think what, what uh, Royal Roads allowed me to do is because I didn't have an undergrad, um, they based my um, being able to come into the program on my professional experience, um, which I had a ton of. It was just it never had that sort of formal education. And for me, it was just a way to validate that professionally I'd done the right things in my career. And then I would have a sort of a educational validation on, attached to that, which it did. And it was 
Um, awesome, awesome experience. And I did, sorry, I, I can see in the question, I, I did the leadership uh, uh, route. Um, I, I was very interested in the international, but I, because I lived internationally, I just, I thought I would get more of the leadership. So that's the route I went. Thanks, I did Mark. the consulting. Oh, sorry. I was oh. just going to answer the question in the chat. Yeah. Uh, I did the consulting uh, specialization uh, because I really wanted to, uh, one, travel and uh, work with different organizations in the areas of strategy and, and leadership. And so that specialization just aligned closely with my with my career career goals. Yeah, and um, I chose leadership, and this might not be a perfect answer, but I, I hope uh, people appreciate the authentic authenticity. Um, after speaking to other alumni, the management consulting was a little bit more demanding than the leadership. And as I said, um, you know, they were all demanding all the specialties, but I was really trying to balance my client needs um, with uh, what I wanted to accomplish at school. And I just didn't feel I could commit the time necessary to excel in that stream. Um, so I went down the leadership path uh, based on advice I had received from other alumni. One thing to note as well is like I, um, at the time I was the, the general manager of our organization, looking after 48 locations and 600 employees. And at the same time, doing an 18 month course, um, I'll tell you, you have to be awesome with your time management, but it's absolutely doable. The, the breaks, I mean, I always use the breaks to try and get ahead on the next programs, um, but it, 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 very doable, even when you have a demanding professional life. Yeah. Thank, thank you. And I'll, I'll just also comment, Mark, <clears throat> excuse me, Mark mentioned that he came into the program under flexible admission. Probably half of our students do enter the program without having an undergraduate degree. So if, you, if you're if you in that situation and you're thinking about it, you are supported. You're, we feel that the experience, you wouldn't come in without an undergraduate degree unless you have significant work and managerial experience. But if you do, those years of experience are worth every bit as much in many cases, in many cases more than an undergraduate degree that may be in something unrelated. Um, so you won't be alone. Uh, you might be a little nervous at first, but you'll have lots of support um, and in most cases, everyone has been away from education for a period of time um, because you need to have quite a bit of work experience for admission uh, into the program. So we have lots of students that uh, come in under flexible admission. In terms of, of choosing your specialization, uh, you also uh, keep in mind that you do not need to choose that specialization before you start the program. So you can easily um, start the program and then get a sense of what you're finding interesting and then you choose the specialization when you're um, when you're already into the program. So Jazz, go ahead. I was just yeah. going to add, um, in addition to Roller Roads offering the flexible admission, you know, this program is also designed for those who, who want to pursue um, opportunities that you know, where this program can support them in. So not everyone that takes this program is a CEO or a manager or a director. And I remember coming in just as a junior manager into or just entry level experience and fe feeling so uh, intimidated. And my cohort, we had 60 at the time, uh, but we had two separate cohorts, but we had 60 students. And the individuals that were in my class were, like I said, CEOs and directors and feeling so in the beginning intimidated. Uh, but then as we progressed and worked into uh, teams and as the program progressed, just finding my place uh, and growing so much. Uh, and, you know, I am now speaking to you all uh, and, and, you know, like um, getting those opportunities that I, always wanted to get. So don't feel intimidated um, by not being, having those titles. Uh, this program, in addition to the flexibility, is is uh, has a little something for everyone. Jazz, I'll, I just want to say something um, to Jazz's point. I, I did the program without ever having any, any intention of, you know, career development or progression. Uh, but out, out of my learned skill sets, I ended up 
progressing through the organization. And I, I believe it is because I have those additional skill sets now. It was never the intention, but I, I, absolutely, I, I agree, Jazz. I mean, if you're doing it for pro career progression, whether it's, you intended it to do that or you know, it, it just happened uh, organically. For me, it just happened organically. It was never, it was just really something I always wanted to do. Um, and by doing it, I mean, I was uh, recently the president of one of our divisions and now vice president of the entire organization. So again, if I didn't have those skill sets that I learned um, at Royal Roads, there's no way I would have been in these positions now. Yeah, our, our tagline, life.changing, I think we'd be hard pressed to find MBA students who have not had their lives significantly changed as a result of, uh, as a result of the program. Yeah, thank you. I'm noticing some questions in the chat, um, so I'm not gonna follow the questions that I have exactly because these questions are great questions and they're gonna, um, they're gonna help us get to things. So uh, Jen, I think you asked, you have, congratulations, you have a seven and an eight year old, your life is super busy uh, and you're working full time and you're wondering, are you crazy to overcommit to the 18 month program and how do you manage your time? So do, do some of your, some of the alumni wanna jump in and share and, and thanks to Elaine too that you I'll comment on your uh, an MGM student who's commented in the chat too so but I'll throw it over to the alumni yeah I can jump in and I, I didn't have uh children during the program but I just had my first in the summer so dad stuff is on my mind right now um a lot of my colleagues did and friends I made were in a similar kind of space young families we'll call it um I think just again, to be candid, uh, the general mood was the 30 month program is a better fit uh, for people who are juggling families, um, work commitments and, and other personal commitments. That's not to say it can't be done. There were some real, you know, let's get her done attitude, uh, folks, men and women that that powered through. But um, at least from my experience, speaking and observing the the friends that I made, um, the the longer program was uh, more manageable and and created a better outcome for everyone at home, at the school and at work, uh, less stress. I think I'll add to that. Um, I too do not have um, young children, but most of my, uh, or a few individuals uh, did have families. And one of the things that helped them through the 18 month program was being strategic and and planning ahead. So they had a partner that would, uh, you know, take care of the meals and do babysitting or a parent would take, you know, pick them up after school. And so I would say if you're thinking about pursuing the or taking the 18 month program, just ensuring that your other responsibilities are taken care of. What else are you responsible for? Um, and can you delegate those tasks so that you have the time to be successful in this program and for self-care? Uh, the 18 month program is the one that I did. It was very intense. Uh, I had to work on top of that and I was going on five hours of sleep and that was without, without kids. So it is a commitment. But one of the things that made me successful was that planning. I uh, let my friends know that I can only hang out during this time. I let my family know. I let the people that I engage with, including my work, so that they were aware and could be supportive. So I think that if you plan for it, you can definitely do the 18-month program, uh, but prioritize um, uh, the other obligations and things that you have going on. Thanks, Another Jack. thing in the team projects I found um, when we were on teams, some of the, the teammates had young kids and and uh, I, I my kids were all growing up. So I, I would you know, maybe do the heavy lifting on times that they needed to have family time. And then when, you know, and then they would jump in when, you know, the kids were sleeping or whatever, whatever, however they did it. So we, as a team managed around um, some of the teammates that had young kids. I mean, there was a lot, I would say probably half of uh, the people in my cohort probably had younger kids. They were younger people. So um, we just supported each other. 
Yeah, thanks, Mark. And that's an excellent point. The team, the functionality of those team or of the teams that you work in are really important. You help each other and you spell off. And if it's if it's not children, it's something else that someone else is dealing with, right? It's a new job or promotion or travel or so life is busy. You guys are all, you know, um professionals working full time and it's it's demanding no matter uh, no matter how you cut it but um, but you work together and you get through and thanks Elaine uh, is one of the participants uh, one of the prospects and she mentions that she's done another graduate program at Royal Roads with a newborn and a full-time role and would you say that she could do the same with the MBA it's probably very similar um, depending on your aptitude towards different things you may find some courses more or less demanding than others but it's absolutely doable and if you're questioning you can always again start in the 18-month program and then if it's too much or if there's a period of time that it's too much then you can uh, can move to the to the 31-month um, program so there was another question. How long did it take for your financial investment to pay off? Any estimates on that? That's a I I want to jump in on this one. Um, when I first applied to the program, I didn't even care how much it cost. I was so determined and so excited to uh, pursue uh, the program. Um, however, at the same time, I purchased my first home, um, and so. I, there were other opportunities that I explored. Uh, I got, I, there's scholarships that Royal Roads offer. So, uh, and I would encourage you to take a look at some of those scholarships and bursaries. And there's new ones that come out each term. There are also provincial and federal bursaries um, and scholarships uh, and other financial um, options. And I'm happy to have that discussion with you one-on-one -on, -one, um, on, on how to support that uh, or how to pay, sorry, for, for the education. Uh, I would say it probably, for me, it, um, it took me just under a year, but that's also because of the other, uh, sorry, of all the uh, scholarships and bursaries and such that, that I applied for, so. We have a great financial aid office and lots of scholarships that often go on, and there's not much competition for them sometimes. Um, so it's they offer great support and there's a lot of resources available. So yeah, thanks, Jazz. Uh, Mark or Alex, do you want to? Yeah, um, I think there were two, two big returns for me. Uh, first was just compensation. Uh, I was worth more coming out of the program. Um, that, that's a direct result of having the credentials and was able to negotiate um, a good, a higher wage than I, I was kind of making independently when I came on with my firm, um, with the commitment to, you know, buy in after a couple of years if everything was going well, and I was able to meet the, the corporate targets that were set. Um, the other return, um, you know, for me, uh, that's brought money into my firm, and then by extension, myself, is uh, the new skill sets I was gained um, during the program. So, uh, we, we were able to develop a whole line of strategic planning uh, for our clients and using a lot of the course material that was learned in the program, organizational change, organizational behavior, marketing. You have a lot of hard skills that can be used, especially uh, in our world as consultants that helped our business grow. And as the business grew, um, uh, the return on investment, um, you know, impacts me in a couple ways uh, positively. Uh, over the over uh since completing the program but for me uh to be completely honest uh my organization paid for my mba um i am looking now at doing the dba which will be on my dime <laughs> um but the reality is you become way more valuable by going through this and what alex just said i mean you're you will be paid more because you are worth more. So I would I would say realistically, it will be paid off. It's probably the fastest ROI in anything you'll do in your life, which is amazing. And it, it may again, it may not be the intention, but it's it's you know even today when we implement change initiatives or any sort of implement implementation of any sort of thing happening in the organization, they look at me and say, "What do you think? What's the best way to do it?" Um, they wouldn't have done that before. So. 
and you have the skills and the competencies and the confidence uh, to, to speak to those questions. Absolutely. It's fantastic to see students as they progress and even as they progress through the program, getting different promotions or changing fields. And it's really, really an exciting thing to, to watch as somebody that's involved in the program. Yeah. Even the materials that we received, uh, all the books and, you know, I still, if I'm writing a, a business proposal and some sort of thing that we're about to roll out, um, I'll build it the same way as we build, you know, our, our some of our papers. I'll grab some of my papers and look at how I wrote it. I'll even go back and, and read. I mean, I use uh, Cotter. I, I refer to Cotter all the time. Like it's huge in business. So, you know, very, very valuable um, and, skills. And, yeah, and you're able to of the program. You're learning how to apply the concepts as you're going through them and that you carry that with you. Absolutely. Sorry, Alex, did, were you going to jump in? Oh, no, okay. no, I was just agreeing with everyone, I yes. think. Uh, okay, yeah. great. We're getting excited. Um, there was one question regarding uh, English and you're, you haven't studied in English before, and you're a little bit hesitant wondering about that. The program is in English, but there's lots of support. There's lots of writing support. And, and as I've mentioned, people are coming with all different backgrounds. So you might be concerned about this. Somebody else might be concerned about a lack of background in finance. Uh, so if you're admitted to the program, that is because we have the confidence that you can succeed in the program. We're going to offer lots of Work to help you do that um, and uh, support will come in the need uh, in terms of, of learning to write better if for example if you need to uh, need support in that area so I would certainly not let that deter you uh, from applying <clears throat> absolutely um, how are we doing for time Andrea do we have time for a few more questions or do you want to jump in can you do you want to keep me on track here I uh, would say we have uh, five more minutes for questions okay Awesome. Um, so we've got one new message. Come in. So are there any courses that you'd recommend on brushing up prior to starting uh, if you haven't been in school for a while? We often encourage uh, applicants to take, there's a critical thinking and writing course that's available through your continuing education studies, and that's a great preparation. And there's also a financial and a managerial accounting course that are also available through our continuing education folks. And those are three courses that oftentimes students uh, will take prior to, uh, prior to enrolling in the program. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so, I guess what advice and insights would you have for someone considering the program? That's probably a good question to try up with. Insight and advice that you'd have uh, for these folks that are with us and for other individuals that are considering the program. I would say for insights and advice, um, I think it's imperative uh, just to know one's purpose and vision, you know, whether, you know, why, why are you taking this? What is it that you hope to, to gain, you know, whether it's personal growth, professional advancement or financial gain, it's important to uh, discern that before embarking on this journey. Um, it's also equally important uh, to have that self-awareness and clarity of what is it that I'm, I'm pursuing uh, and if you're unsure, uh, well, you've landed in the right place. And so reaching out to alumni, having those conversations, reach out to some of the instructors that are teaching those courses uh, that you're curious about, speak to Lois, uh, find out more. Um, but that was that was one of the things that I did was uh, goal planning um, and and how how does it align with where I want to go? Thank you, Jazz. Yeah, um, this is probably a given, but do it. Uh, pick the program at RRU, and it'll be a great choice that you'll um, you'll uh, thank yourself for down the road. As, as far as um, insight into the program and advice, it would be um, you know if you if you get accepted and and it's your path, um, enjoy it every minute of it. And the the best part for me, honestly, was the friends I made. Um, we still keep in touch on the group chats. Uh, we still send each other pictures of barbecues. 
We ask each other professional and personal advice. Um, and I think that's special. And I've I've been in a lot of different working in academic environments, and none of them were as special uh, as the time spent at Royal Roads. So uh, when you get there, um, cherish the moments and the friends that you make, because there will be things that you take with you for many, many years after you complete the program and, and have a nice piece of paper on your wall. Yeah. And just to add to that, sorry, Mark, I'm just jumping in. Um, one of the things I mentioned earlier is partnering. Um, in business with some of my alumni yeah. and how exciting and so just to echo what Alex said is you know enjoy your journey uh, enjoy uh, networking and uh, uh, getting to know mm -hmm. your cohort uh, and establishing those relationships because uh, they're going to help you not just with the coursework but help you grow personally and potentially professionally as well. Um, I, I think what I wish is I wish I did it sooner um, mm -hmm. I, uh, at the beginning I bombed when I went first residence, I bombed hard and I, uh, I thought that there's no way this is going to beat me. I reached out to the writing center. They connected me with a writing coach. I ended up hiring a writing coach through the writing center. I, I hired an accounting coach to teach me how to understand these concepts. Um, I, I'd never written a paper in my life. I mean, I'd been out of school for over 30 years. So, um, you know, I finished top three in the class. I finished my OMP before final residence. But these were goals I set for myself to try and stay ahead of everything because I just didn't think I had the skills to be able to do it last minute. Give yourself lots of time and just uh, just enjoy it. It's 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 fun. You'll come out of there, you know, I, I think I finished the program and I, I think I had brain damage for the first couple of months until I almost, <laughs> until I, you kind of, get your feet under you. And then once your feet are under you, you realize you're way smarter than you were before. I mean, as, as crazy as it is, it's just, you have so many more tools than when you came in with, but it, it's, it's like you're in a blender for 18 months or 31 months. You come out, you go, wow, did I learn a lot? This is awesome. Right. And, and, and now, you know what, when I'm in meetings, I don't talk as much. I, I think way more and when I do speak, it's it's way more strategic rather than just being heard. Um, I think I, you know, I'm, hopefully I bring a lot more to the table when I do speak. So it's fun. I keep saying it's fun, but it's fun. <laughs> it's a crazy way, a crazy way. What a testament to uh, to to the to Royal Roads and to the program. And we're all getting so I'm getting so excited just listening to you guys. And as I see the questions, I'm getting excited to maybe welcome some of you that are here that uh, that haven't applied yet or thinking of applying. Um, we've got some other questions in the chat, but I'm going to turn it over to Andrea. I'm going to say before I do that, just thank you so much, Mark and Jazz and Alex. It's so wonderful to be with you and to hear your to hear some stories again. So thank you and thanks all of you that are considering applying, you won't regret it. It's a wonderful community uh, and you learn a heck of a lot. So Andrea, over to you. Thank you, Lois. Thank you to Mark, Jazz and Alex. It has been a pleasure to hear all your experience and I also getting excited. Not that I'm planning to go back to school, but maybe I should be considering something else, uh, but You'll be yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, but thank you so much. And I just want to let know everybody that we are going to be sharing uh, their information so you can we would be able to connect with them um, on LinkedIn. Uh, so we will be sharing that information uh, to this afternoon or early morning with the recording link. So with that, I'm going to pass and going to start talking about uh, how to apply. So I want to add one quick thing, uh, yes. sorry, just to um, add, if you do have questions um, that you're not maybe comfortable speaking with in the chat for the sake of time, uh, again, please reach out to us. Um, our emails are in the chat as well. Andrea will provide it. There's also ways for you to interact with other uh, alumni um, so and, and instructors. So please keep the questions coming. Uh, we're here to support. Thank you, Jess. That is very kind of you. And I agree. That is something that is beautiful for Royal Roads. Once uh, people graduate during the, the program or sometime in the way they are students, uh, people are always open to connect with uh, prospective students because we know it's a 
important decision in life. It's a great investment, not only about the financial commitment, but also about the personal commitment. It's going to be, it's a journey that we want to be part of. So thank you, Jazz and Mark and Alex that already have to be, but thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your support. My pleasure. So with that, I'm going to talk about very briefly about the application process. I know we are going to be three minutes away of 1 p.m., but for those people that have to leave at 1, uh, we thank you for joining us today, and we understand that uh, we ask you to commit for one hour, but for those that can stay a little bit longer, uh, please stay. I'm just to, going to share how to apply, and all the session is going to be recorded. So if you have to go, don't worry. We will make sure that you get that information as soon as possible. So at Royal Roach University, there is two ways that you can apply to, to the program. Um, when you're applying to the program, you don't have to choose one or the other. The person that is assessing your application will consider if you're coming through a standard admissions or flexible admissions. To be considered a standard admissions, you will need to complete a four years of, of comparable undergrad degree in a related field from a recognized post-secondary institution. It can be an institution university in Canada, or it can be an institution abroad. And uh, normally we also ask for at least seven years of full-time rele relevant work experience with three years at the management level. And it's very important for us to see that increasing of levels of responsibility. Uh, the other piece that is we want to see is demonstration of writing and numeracy skills to succeed in the program. There is, this requirement uh, can be met through prior coursework uh, through work experience or professional credentials or professional development. Um, for those people that might not have uh, either that can demonstrate the writing or the numeracy skills, um, we recommend to, to complete two courses or one of them. Uh, one is the, ac the academic writing and the other one is about accounting. The academic writing and the critical thinking is going to help you to prepare to prepare you to be able to write an academic uh, writing, but also at the master level. And of course, accounting is going, is going to help you with the numeracy. Flexible admissions are for those people that might not have a four years of undergrad degree. But on the other hand, they had many, many years of work experience. Uh, to be considered a flexible admissions, um, applicants are normally required to demonstrate 10 years of full-time business-related work experience and we're looking at increasing of responsibility. A combination of post-secondary and professional accredit accredited qualifications, it will be important, uh, but it will, um, we will assess everybody. I think for the flexible admissions, the most important piece is that everybody has a different journey. And we are going to work, work with you to understand your journey. Uh, to help you to prepare for the MBA, we ask applicants that are coming to flexible admissions to take the academic writing and write the, critic, the academic writing and critical thinking course, as well as the accounting program through our uh, continuous studies program. I just want to mention that those programs are offered fully online and people will be able to uh, complete them from anywhere where they are. Um, as we mentioned about uh, the additional courses uh, that we recommend people, we talk a little bit about the financial accounting and the academic writing and critical thinking. Um, and it's important that when you are picking the course, uh, that the course that you are, are selecting ends a minimum of five weeks prior the program starts date. Uh, this is important to know because for us, it's important that you have, be com you have completed the programs before you start your MBA. So if you need more assistance, uh, we're happy to share all the details. When are the next starting dates for those programs? Uh, language requirement, if English is not your first language, we are going to ask you to submit your English language proficiency, proficiency oh my goodness, proficiency, pro, pro, proficiency scores. Um, we are also going to ask you, uh, for those ones we uh, receive different uh, type of tests, we can do TOEFL, IS, Duolingo, uh, so there are multiple options available for you. Uh, and there's two more options that we offer through Royal Roads. One is about the pathways, uh, when students can uh, complete the pathway program to our uh, Global Learning and Language Center at Royal Roads University. That pathway program, what is going to help you is going to help you to prepare um, to have the English, the academic English to be able to enroll out into our program. 
and the other option if you graduated from a college or a university which English was the primary language of instructions in that uh, in your program. And now the most exciting piece is how to apply. First, you need to complete an online application. Uh, the online application cost is 131 uh, with 39 cents. After that, uh, we are going to ask you to submit the following documents. Uh, the first document are the official transcripts. It's very important that the official transcripts come directly from the so there's two options. Sometimes uh, the universities or colleges give you the option to send it directly to Royal Roads. So if you have that option, I will check that box. So we will receive all that information from you. Uh, the other option is when becoming a sealed envelope. If you are sending the sealed env envelope, it's very important that the envelope is sealed. Once you open that um, envelope, the official transcripts are not official anymore. The next piece is to talk about um, is the detailed resume. When we're asking for a detailed resume, we are not looking for the two pages resume that we normally submit when we're looking for a job. This is an important document because this is the time that you are going to demonstrate your academic background as well as your professional background. So for the academic, we want to know any, uh, uh, from, yeah, from the school side, we are going to ask you for all the academic courses or programs that you have completed, as well as non-academic programs that you have completed for professional development, for example. Uh, for the work experience, it's very important that you give us a timeline of, of each of the jobs that you had, um, also the name of the company that you work and the title, but mostly it's important for us to know a little bit what kind of responsibilities you have in each of those jobs. Here's when you are going to demonstrate how you have been increasing responsibilities during your career. Uh, the next document are the personal statement. Uh, statement of interest. I always get very excited about this document uh, because basically it's where we are going to ask you to share with us about your motivations of what you are going to apply into the MBA because we want to make sure that we are the best fit for you and you are also the best fit for this program. Um, and there's a few more details about uh, the personal statement uh, that Tracy Somers can share on the chat box with all of you. Uh, we will ask you for a writing sample. And the last document are two letters of reference. Those have, that could be an academic letter or a professional letter. If you have been out of school for a long time, we will always accept two professional letters. What I always ask or recommend to people is to share your personal statement with those people that are writing those reference letters. So they have a better understanding of what is your motivation and they can share more details about the experience that they have had uh, working with you or when you were at school. And the key dates coming up. Uh, so we have a few um, start dates coming up. The next one is January 2nd. Uh, is either for the 18 or 31 months. To apply, you will need to submit an, your application by December the 2nd. And the following option is the July 2022. Of, um, and for the deadline for this program, it will be April 22nd. So if you are looking into the July program, you have uh, a few months to complete your application. If you are seeking maybe to start this winter, uh, you are just in time, you have a few days left to start and complete your application. And financial aid, that was a question that we had today. So as Lois and our alumni share with all of us, Royal Roads have uh, different options available for you how to support um, your education in a financial way. Uh, so we have loans, awards, research scholarships, and other funding available. I highly encourage you to reach out to our uh, financial aid team or visit um, their website as you will find a lot of resources. If each of you might have a different journey and you might be able to access to different uh, financial aid support. So I highly encourage you to apply to different uh, loans and awards if they're available and also find what are the best ones for you. And uh, if you're applying in, through our flexible admissions, I highly encourage you to connect with our um, enrollment advisors. Her name is Tracy Somers and her email is tracy.1somers at royalroads.ca. And if you have also general inquiries, you can always connect with them by email or by phone number. Uh, but if you are very interested in the MBA, Tracy will be the best person to connect with. So with that said, I believe all the questions on the chat box have been answered. Uh, but with that said, we want to thank you 
all of you. And Lois, is there anything that you would like to add before we close the webinar? No, if there's anything, as we've mentioned, don't hesitate to get in touch with any of us. We're all here to support you through your journey of application and, uh, and hopefully through your journey of the MBA. Uh, and thank you, Andrea. Thanks, Tracy, for being here. And thank you all for being interested in the MBA. Thank you, Lois. And thank you, everyone. We hope you have a beautiful rest of your week, wherever you are located. And we hope to see you soon at Royal Roads. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Okay.